back to Plug and Play V. I'm Steve. In this one, we'll be looking at the Rivian Adventure Network, a DC fast charging network that was formerly only available to drivers of Rivian models, but now is increasingly open to other vehicles with the CCS1 connector or adapter for that. Well, this will be the first charging vendor spotlight. Let's take a look at some of the charging networks that are now available to challenge some of the established older public networks like Electrify America, EVgo, and several others. So let's get into where we are with the Rivian Adventure Network in the summer of 2025. So this was really sparked by a video I did last week, which did, went down from Boston, Massachusetts to Southwest Pennsylvania, and pretty much covered a bunch of new providers or older providers that were previously closed and uh, have recently opened up. This includes Rivian and its adventure network, which was previously only serving R1T and R1S models, but has increasingly been open since the turn of the year to uh, non-Rivian models. The only problem was there were very few of those newer stations with the uh, newer equipment out there, and the round 100 stations on the Rivian Adventure Network of that only about 10% were available. So obviously a very small footprint and uh, not widely accessible. Fast forward six months and everything has changed quite a bit with 115 sites uh, from Rivian of that 63 are now available for other models that use the CCS1 connector or an adapter to access it. So that's 55% of the network and increasingly Rivian has been accelerating the upgrade of those stations over the spring. We should expect most of the network, if not all of it, to be accessible to everyone by the end of the year. So this is useful in several areas because uh, the network is typically placed, you know, some of them are in standard locations, retail malls, travel, interstate corridors, that kind of thing. But there are a lot of them in uh, locations where you're doing scenic drives, national parks, more remote areas like Idaho, down on the Blue Ridge Parkway, a bunch of different areas that have been super useful. You also have the kind of charging outposts, the flagship locations like Rivian has a Joshua Tree, which albeit expensive, as we'll come on to uh, in a little bit here, is a uh, really useful location and very attractive as a charging hub. So one of the things we're seeing this year in 2025 is a gradual shift to the uh, J3400 NAX connector that is so familiar on Tesla vehicles, uh, starting to come into more non-Tesla models like the uh, Hyundai models, but not a whole lot of them out there. Obviously, Tesla has a very big market share, so there's a lot of vehicles to potentially get into. But as of uh, today, most of the charging stations that are opening up are still CCS1 unless they're Tesla superchargers. So that's important because that is true of Rivian. All of Rivian stations are still on the CCS1 connector. You're not going to see any NAX J3400 handles at these sites just yet. How easy it is to replace those, I don't know. You would think maybe doing an upgrade they would uh, move to that, but obviously they're still uh, aware that most of their installed base of vehicles for Rivian is uh, CCS1 and uh, that won't change until we probably get to the Rivian R2 and some of their 2026 models, I would suspect. So in the meantime, uh, we have a lot of opening stations, but they will still be CCS1. So be aware if you're a Tesla driver looking at these, which may be the case because they always have a pull through stall. That's quite useful as uh, a lot of superchargers do not. You're going to need that CCS1 adapter. And on Tesla models, I think it's before 2021, you will need the upgrade to the vehicle to be able to use the CCS1 adapter at these stations. So the nice thing about this upgrade program that Rivian has been on for its adventure network is that it pretty much spans the country. They've uh, got close to 30 states now. So if you're traveling this summer in 2025, you should be able to come across a station that will be able to charge your vehicle, as I say, subject to those CCS1 kind of adapter requirements. The nice thing about them is at least one pull-through stall. So although canopies are rare, as we uh, see more commonly at Pilot Flying J, which also has pull-through stalls, you will get that guarantee that uh, a pull-through stall will be there whether it's available or not may depend on the time of travel peak times may be very popular because people start to associate this with Rivian one thing we do have to bear in mind is pricing Rivian is typically more pricey than the 50 53 cents per kilowatt hour average that we see across the country in different uh, regions it varies but typically you're looking at uh, above 55 cents per kilowatt hour and all the way up to 74 cents per kilowatt hour at some points in uh, Rivian's recent history at uh, Joshua Tree but uh, 
uh, that has come down a little bit recently and hopefully they're getting the message that these more expensive prices are uh, putting people away from their locations. I charged down in Newburgh, New York recently. I think that was at 64 cents per kilowatt hour. So pretty pricey and it does rack up fairly quickly, especially if you're in one of these large trucks that's uh, pulling and using those pull through stalls. So something to be aware of. But always keep an eye on that pricing because it does change fairly dynamically and if Rivian's getting the message ahead of summer travel that the pricing is a little bit prohibitive, they may start to tamp that down. You typically get a discount from Rivian if you're driving a Rivian branded model and that's going to be somewhere between 7 to 10 cents typically per kilowatt hour uh, for Rivian owners. It was formerly free so that didn't last that long but uh, at least they do get that discount and it's one of those perks of being a Rivian owner as you drive one of their models and get a slight discount on charging. So this will be a regular series now. I'm going to try and do these uh, charging vendor spotlights just really quick as we go into summer 2025 and hopefully give you some uh, places you might want to consider as more and more vendors come online. You can check out that multiple uh, alternative vendor tour I did down from Boston to Pennsylvania. That will be one way to see some of the vendors coming up. And you can also subscribe to our weekly EV infrastructure digest, which uh, kind of looks a bit like a, a email version of Walter's weekly digest of the Network Architect channel AFDC listings so you'll get some of the same kind of stations coming up there but we'll also do charging vendor spotlights stuff that I've seen on my travels and just generally interesting things in the world of North American EV infrastructure so sign up for that if that's something you'd like to see in your inbox every Sunday down in the comments or the video description let us know which charging vendors you'd like to see covered in future episodes of this and we'll try and get a bunch of them out as the summer progresses let me know what you think of the Rivian Adventure Network if you've used it or if you're hoping to use it as it expands uh, in your summer travels this year in your electric vehicle, what you're driving, where you plan to use it, and whether that pricing might be a little bit prohibitive for you, or if it's just the convenience of those things we've mentioned that will pull you in. As always, thanks for watching and look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers.